Thank you very much, Marie. Um, good morning, Yanda Vinaka, Mbula Vinaka, everyone, and thank you very much for this opportunity. I've got five minutes, so I'll try to uh, put in as much as I can in there. Uh, my, my orders from Roshika is that I talk about uh, child abuse uh, in Fiji and the Pacific, and some of the uh, protection um, uh, strategies we have. So. Uh, I belong to the Pacific Women's Network Against Violence Against Women, established in 1992, about 13 countries, and most of the countries are present uh, on this webinar, um, uh, are part of it. Uh, so we work on ending violence against women, girls, and then of course, uh, because there was no one working on children, we had to include the children also. So from the very, our inception, uh, right from the beginning, we've already included children. So. And we have uh, meetings every two years, and we have reports from each other. We have uh, now, since COVID, we have uh, six monthly Zoom meetings, so we keep up with our data and things like that. So one of the things I can say is that child abuse, I mean, child abuse is physical, emotional, um, sexual abuse, neglect, and so on. But, uh, um, and we have a lot of that, and there's very little recognition for physical abuse that is rife in all our countries and uh, even though in Fiji we have uh, uh, laws around that now forbidding that, uh, it's illegal to beat up children and so on, but uh, often uh, law enforcement doesn't take that into account because it's so much a norm to discipline children, don't spare the rod, you know, and we all grew up like that so therefore it's okay to beat them up. So that is a difficult one. Uh, there's a lot of emotional abuse where children are concerned. We don't recognize that. Um, and then, of course, the sexual abuse. That is the big, big elephant in the room all the time. We talk about child abuse. No one wants to touch that one. That's the difficult one. And one of the reasons that we see throughout the region, Fiji included, is that most of the perpetrators are known to the child, as known to the women also, adult women also. Um, and, uh, and, uh, and often they're family members, they're family members. So there's a huge conspiracy of, conspiracy of silence protect, protecting the perpetrator and so on. And often it's the patriarch of the home uh, and someone very important in the community and so on. And as I talk about sports later on, I'll talk a little bit about that also. So. Uh, it is not talked about, but in Fiji, we do have a lot of awareness now, mainly because of organizations like the Fiji, I would say an organization like ours, Fiji Women's Crisis Center. Right from 1984, we've talked about child sexual abuse in the media and everyone else. So people have picked up from a great reluctance. People are now picking up. We have very good data coming out of the Office of the Director of Prosecutions social welfare, and so on. Uh, you know, I was just looking at our data this morning, and from 2016 to 2021, we dealt with uh, about uh, 225 uh, child rape survivors from the ages of 2 to 17 years old. Most of the perpetrators were family members. Um, only about 4% were strangers. Uh, and I was just looking at our latest stats, so that was about 225 over a five-year period, but latest, uh, latest stats from January to September over the last nine months alone, we have seen 209 rape survivors. Uh, so that is quite a huge jump. Uh, and uh, wh what is good is we don't believe that it's increasing neither here nor in the Pacific, but there is more awareness, more reporting of it. And other agencies, including government agencies, the religious agencies, they are all coming on board. And of course, the sporting facilities, uh, uh, yeah, and so on. So we provide counseling and so on. So, but there is no one solely dedicated to the sexual abuse of children. Uh, we do have, in, I think Fiji is quite ahead in child protection. Sorry, I don't use safeguarding. I've always used, I'm an old school person, so I use child protection. So we do a lot of that. Um, and uh, and uh, if I think Fiji is quite far ahead than other countries, in, uh, from my observations. Uh, we do have child protection laws, we do have a child protection unit within the Ministry of Women, Children and Poverty Alle Alleviation, uh, and very good ideas, and we start off very well, there are 
um, you know, welfare officers who are dedicated to children, but implementation of and recognizing risk is very, 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 very low. That is where we fall down. That's one of the biggest challenges. And we don't seem to recognize the risk children run uh, of, you know, of being uh, uh, molested and so on until we see the, the, the data, the numbers. We also find that development agencies which are dedicated to children shy away from the sexual abuse of children also. So we have that kind of a problem here. Coming to sports, uh, we, we partner very well with the Fiji NRL as well as Suva Volleyball uh, in uh, organizing workshops for administrators, for coaches, for players uh, on uh, on child protection, the dynamics around it, what they are, the definitions, and so on. So we've done that for a number of years. Uh, we used to do that with Fiji Rugby Union, but because we criticized, we spoke out and called out they're allowing a convicted rapist to play before his time was up. Uh, you know, regularly he plays in all the local club games and so on. So FRU no longer works with us. Uh, but definitely we are working with FN FNRL and uh, the Suva Volleyball. Suva Volleyball, we've worked with them for over 10 years now in this work. Um, in, from sports, from the sports arena, over the years we have had reports of sexual abuse, of sexual harassment, of domestic violence, and so on, uh, for, and dealt with individual survivors. But one of the things we found was, and this is adult women as well as young women, uh, uh, children, um, we have found the reluctance to address the issue. Uh, and, you know, for example, if uh, if a woman and her husband are both, or her partner, her boyfriend, are both playing the same sports, and she dares to complain about his domestic, his beating her up and ill-treating her and controlling her, uh, you know, being able to play and things like that. We had we had a case here where, in a particular sports, the woman was asked to leave, even though she was in the national team. But he was the greater player, so he would remain. We, of course, worked with the, the association to address the issue and so on. So those, that's one of many stories that we have. Um, and then also around children, we have been called out to schools and so on to uh, counsel um, uh, children uh, and uh, teachers also. Uh, because they were traumatized by incidents that have happened, and uh, I, particularly around uh, public uh, uh, swimming pools uh, and so on, where the lifeguards, the security guard, uh, coaches, these people have been, uh, there have been issues around them uh, molesting, touching up, harassing uh, young children and so on. But once again, the protection was there one more time. Protection of uh, the perpetrator, and if not the perpetrator, he was high up, you know, in the administration or the coach and so on, then protecting the organization, the reputation of the organization became a lot more important. So that is the milieu in which we work. We continue to work with any sports body that would want to work with us. And I'm so glad that this is happening. I had no idea, Roshika, that this is happening. So I'm so encouraged to see that you're having these webinars around safeguarding protection of uh, uh, children and so on. So I really would like to, you know, know more about you and so on. Um, just I'll end with some recommendations and then I'll wait for uh, sports, uh, for questions. But I saw what you are going to go through today and particularly with Roshika, that I think a lot of this will be covered. You know, definitely I would say um, there needs to be awareness sessions. That has really mattered in the way we have worked with Suva Volleyball and NRL. Um, you know, so there must be mandatory with the admi administrators, anyone who's concerned or uh, involved with, that, uh, with the players and so on, administrators, coaches, players, and as well as the children, you know, teaching them good touches, bad touches, and things like that, from the experts um, and so on. And then policies, you know, with ethical standards, uh, defining what uh, abuse could be uh, very clearly. Uh, abuse is, not could be. Uh, reporting procedures, disciplinary procedures, etc. A trained officer to deal with reporting, uh, someone who's neutral, someone who 
will do a good job and so on. And I think one of the most important things is due diligence in recruitment of officials, coaches and so on. I think that is just so important. Uh, you know, police records and so on. Uh, you know, do, we ha do you have a child protection policy and so on. And then also very important throughout the Pacific, uh, Fiji has got a very good uh, uh, service delivery protocol. Uh, pa referral pathways are there, making use of those. Uh, I know that Solomon Islands has got one, Tonga is developing one, and other Pacific countries, Vanuatu. So, so I think, uh, you know, making use, if you're in all these countries, that making use of these uh, national uh, protocols and referral pathways that are available. So.